Sumners from the University of Hawaii Economic Research Organization. And Sumner LaCroix is here to talk about that. Good morning, Sumner, and thank you so much for joining us. We're also going to be talking about the legislature's high-tech tax credits. But first, let's get to those stock numbers and the fears of the debt crisis spreading to the United States are pretty real and it's affecting the stock market this morning. Well, there's fears about the debt crisis. Whether or not it's going to spread to the United States, I think, is something that uh, we ought to be a little bit cautious about. Mm -hmm. um, the United States is much, much stronger than Greece is. Uh, Greece has much higher debt levels. Uh, it has much more severe problems, too, in putting its economy back together than we do. Sometimes that might be hard to believe, but it's a small country. It's not able to devalue its exchange rate. Um, it's it's, it's uh, politics are, are a mess. Um, it's, it's really going to have a hard time getting its, um, its act back together. And the problem with Greece is in Europe there isn't just Greece. There's Portugal that's in bad shape. Mm -hmm. There's Spain that's in bad shape. There's Italy that's in bad shape. And the fear is, is that if things continue to go bad in Greece, that the contagion will spread to some of these other countries and that will provoke a crisis in Europe. Now down the road that could affect the United States. Mm -hmm. uh, today I, 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 I think we should all Chill a little All bit right, on that chill factor. out. Okay, okay. Yeah. well, but yeah. it is reflecting in those numbers. It is. Yeah. And uh, let's talk about uh, the legislature's high tech tax credits and uh, that were sent right. to Governor Linda Lingle. There are two bills. Can you explain what those two bills are and, and what's going to be happening with those? Okay, well, we essentially have two tax credits that help the high tech industry here in Hawaii. One's an R&D tax credit that provides a 20% subsidy to any R&D spending by these firms, research and development spending. That's any spending on, on a new technology and new products. It's a very generous credit. In fact, it's the most generous credit for R&D in the, in the United States. One of the bills, uh, SB uh, 2001, uh, essentially renews the R&D tax credit for another year through mm -hmm. December 2011. That's a really good thing because this is a very, a very well-founded credit. In that same bill, uh, SB 2001, they get rid of the investment tax credit. Now the investment tax credit is the second tax credit that's meant just for, um, for high-tech firms, with high-tech firms being uh, uh, any firms that are, that are engaged in biotechnology, ocean sciences, optics and sonar, new software development, non-fossil uh, fuel energy related technology, astronomy, or performing arts products. It's, mm -hmm. a it's, it's a relatively long list. Pretty broad. But there's a 100% investment tax credit that's provided. That means any investor making an investment in these industries gets back 100% of their investment from the state over a five-year period. The problem with this particular credit is that it's proven to be, as you might expect from 100% credit, s somewhat expensive. And the results are a little bit controversial. There are people yeah. out there who believe that the results haven't been bad. Um, I'm, a, I'm of a little bit different opinion, just believing that the results haven't been all that, haven't been all that great to warrant the costs that, that we've been expending on these. So and that very first bill basically renews the R&D credit and it gets rid of the investment tax mm -hmm. credit. Um, I think this is a good bill and that the governor ought to give serious consideration yeah. to this bill. Well, re really quickly, Sumner, uh, SB 2401, do you think it's a good bill and exactly what does it do? Really okay. quickly, we're running out of time. I I don't think it's a good bill at all. Essentially what it does is the people have already invested in the high-tech industry. Mm -hmm. um, it essentially tells them, look, you made these investments in the expectation that you're, that you're going to get these credits from the state. Now in midstream, like say two, three years into paying the credits, the state's saying, oh, we're going to suspend credit payments for three years. I just don't think that's right. I think essentially it's the state breaking its promises. All right. When the state starts to break its promises, uh, future credibility is impaired, and that means that it's much harder for all of us to do business. Sumler LaCroix from UHERO, thank you so much for Thanks joining us. We love seeing you every Friday, and we'll talk to you guys next week.